Good afternoon and welcome to the San Mateo Arboretum Society's Hybrid Succulent Topped Pumpkin Workshop. The program will last approximately 60 minutes and be recorded. Kathy will answer any questions during the program. For those viewing on Zoom, submit your questions by clicking on the chat box icon at the bottom of your screen. Zoom viewers can create their succulent topped pumpkin along with Kathy and hopefully will show us their creations at the end of the program. Before we start, a little information about what is happening at the Arboretum Society. Our nursery in San Mateo Central Park is usually open noon to three on Saturdays and Sundays. Payment is by credit or debit card, Google or Apple Pay. No cash is accepted. The nursery is staffed by volunteers and may occasionally be closed. So check our website, sanmateoarboretum.org or call 650-5790536 extension two for updated information. The Master Gardener Plant Clinic is scheduled from noon to three on the same days as our programs through November. While you are in Central Park, visit the Rose Garden, Butterfly Hummingbird Garden, and our Sun and Shade Demonstration Gardens. All are maintained by Arboretum Society volunteers. So I wanna welcome now start our program, Kathy, and our volunteer who's worn many hats at the Arboretum, and she's really quite creative and uh, we're looking forward. They just, they just think I'm creative. I'm really not. I'm kind of a math person and I always thought, oh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not creative. I'm not artsy. Well, I have learned that you can use both sides of your brain, guys. So um, uh, you can be creative. You can be quite artsy. Um, and uh, this is one fun way to, um, to do that. For those of you at home, like Sue said, you can go ahead and, and, uh, and work as, as, I, as I talk. And uh, hopefully you'll have something beautiful at the end to um, let us see. This is one that I did before the class. Um, and this one uh, follows kind of a thing that I learned uh, when I first started doing these. And that is that you have thrillers, fillers, and fillers. So when we ask you to pick one, it's good. Thank you, Kevin. Um, that flipping was bothering me a little bit. Um, the one large one is your thriller. That's the one that draws people's attention initially. And then you've got your spillers, the things that are going to, to uh, dangle down. And you've got a lot of different types of um, you know, spillers over there that you, can, that you can choose from. And then you've got your fillers, which is all the other things that you're gonna put around um, to, to fill it in. Then you've also got your naturals, which is, um, you know, the acorns or um, little pine cones. These are, what would you say these were, Sue? These uh, are um, type of iris. So this is the seed pod uh, that's left over afterwards. Uh, here comes another pumpkin person. Um, this I'm gonna be using for a spot of color. This actually comes off of a grass that I bought in the, um, um, nursery produces some absolutely gorgeous orange flowers most of the spring and into summer and then this is what's left over which are seed pods and this stuff spreads and it works great to, to kill you know the weeds don't grow around it it's really cool um so that gives you an idea of where we're going then you know you, you've got different types of moss we have put on your table um a kind of um a sheet moss uh that some of it's a nice dark green some of it's a lighter green um, you can use, you know, this type of moss if you want, or you can use this for a splash of color. Um, lots of things. So first thing for the people at home that you want to do is you want to get your, your workspace prepared. You're going to be working with glue. And unless you use like a stick or something to put your glue on, your fingers are going to get sticky. So I have, kind of fancy here, but um, fun. I put a some water in a teacup and I have a paper towel that will be damp so that I can reach over and clean my fingers when they get really, really sticky. So that when I pick up the next piece, um, it's not all stuck and then this stuff won't stick to my fingers and I'll have it all over the place. Um, also, it's good to have uh, some paper or something down because it's going to get messy. This stuff is very, um, you, know, you, can, you can see this, you can see already my table's 
you know, messy from this stuff. So, um, so for the folks at home, um, there's that to think about. Now your pumpkin, when you pick your pumpkin, you know, you want to make sure that uh, it's solid. And I know you guys probably all did that. You're not looking at, you know, if it's got Mars or things, things that are uh, broken skin. This is an area where bacteria can get in and that's why they rot. So you notice when you make your, your, your jack-o'-lanterns within a week, they're starting to rot, right? And they're just falling apart. These pumpkins will last six months, maybe a year, depending on how you care for them. The gourds last a lot longer. So if you actually pick a gourd type of pumpkin, I mean, a gourd and some pumpkin, um, those work great too. Um, we, we are not going to cut into this. It's going to stay solid. Um, I did with this particular pumpkin that I chose, I actually cut the top off of it. The top was kind of squishy and weird. And I thought, oh, it's starting to kind of get mildewy. So I cut it off so that this could dry out. I want my pumpkin to last as long as, as it can. Um, so get your get your stuff, spread it out, know what you're what you're looking at. And, um, and then we're going to start. You have glue at your table. Um, they're probably all new. So the first thing you're going to uh, do is grab scissors and open them up. Usually I say, you know, this lid, I have the worst time with these lids. They disappear, they fall on the floor, they end up in the garbage. So I'm going to put it someplace. You might have to remind me later that that's where I put it. That's where I put it. <laughs> So that I can find it again when I'm done, because I'm probably not going to use the whole uh, bottle of glue, um, but I am going to use a lot of it. So um, safeguard your pumpkin from um, getting it bumped or bruised, because that will shorten its life. You know, um, there was a question earlier about how long will they last. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to generously spread some glue on the top. And I'm gonna leave my glue sideways, or if I could, I keep it this way, although it's gonna leak out. Um, so sideways is sufficient because it's just faster when the, when the bottle starts to get lower, you know, you gotta wait for it. Cause this is tacky glue. It's a lean's tacky glue. And so what we use, we don't use the, the white glue's a little thinner, it will work, but it takes longer to dry. And you want things to be positioned and stay stuck. So the tacky glue works really well. So this is what, what we use. You can also use, um, the hot glue, and we've got hot glue, hot glue gun in the back. So if you've got something that is heavy and it doesn't want to stay stuck, um, the hot glue works pretty good. It works pretty good, particularly on the natural. Um, I'm not real fond of it on the succulents because in my mind, hot glue is, you know, if you get that on your skin, it hurts, right? You know, and, and the plant leaves are pretty, pretty delicate, particularly succulents. If you leave these out in the hot sun for any length of time, it starts to show, right? So imagine putting hot glue on. But if you're going to put it underneath, just put it on the leaves, and you can actually use hot glue to, to put it together if you want. Um, the other reason that I like the, the tacky glue is because later, if you want to take it apart, you just soak it in water, and that tacky glue will loosen up, and you can take all of those succulents off. You know, in three to six months, let's say you're really tired of having your pumpkin sitting around, and you decide you want to plant your, your succulents, you can do that. So um, you're going to take your moss and you're going to position it on the top of your pumpkin and just press it down. You can always adjust this later. I know some folks like the, um, you know, this is, okay, should put it here. it's a little bit messy. It's not perfect, but I'm going to cover it with succulents. So, you know, it, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you can trim it around if you want a perfect circle. Some people like it. Um, and Or you can use less if, let's say, you want the succulents to hang over and you don't want to see this. Some people like that look. Um, so it's really up to you and your creativity how you want your pumpkin to look when you get done. I like the messiness of this kind of hanging down as well. And it adds um, adds something when I do the, the spillers as, as well. Yeah, well, I did show. I did try to show them that, um, and uh, but you're right. Um, do you want to switch cameras for me? And we'll, yeah. So, so this one you can see that some of the moss is hanging out on that side. Actually, it's, I think it's pretty much hanging out everywhere. There's one spot there where it's a little bit covered, um, 
and then I've got the spillers. Um, so that's that. And then so here's the that's how that one looks. And you can see, you can still see my stem here in the middle. Um, I didn't cover it because I'm going to cover that with, with a succulent. Um, now I've got my my choice here. I was kind of looking at this going, okay, which which thriller do I want? And feel free, you know, you picked one when you were over there. If you change your mind, you can always go back and put that one back and grab a different one. Um, so, you know, just trying to say, okay, uh, this one might be a little big for this pumpkin, right? Um, it just kind of takes over. If you look at how much of it it, it covers, um, I may not want that particular one. It may just be too big. So that one's up for grabs. I'm gonna use this one. I think that one might be too small for my thriller. So, yeah, I gotta think about this one. Um, so that's what you're gonna do. You know, you're gonna think about, okay, which way, which ones do I want? I think I am gonna use this one now that I'm looking at it again. Um, I picked out, from from my yard, but you've got some over there as well. Um, these, um, I forget what these are called again. Um, they're like little jelly beans. They look like little jelly beans. And I actually uprooted them completely. So, because uh, I'm expecting these to root on here. So having the roots mixed in underneath some of this stuff, not a big deal. So I'm gonna, before I start gluing, I'm gonna put these on. I'm going to take a look at it and say, okay, I kind of like the way that looks. Um, and you know, I'm going to put one here. And so I'm, I'm going to take a look at what I've got. And let's actually move this over here so we can see it on camera. So basically all I'm doing is I am positioning things before I start gluing to kind of get an idea of, you know, where they're going to lay. So much for that one, huh? Um, I'm going to look for things that maybe have some red in them, or some color. And then these little ones I'm going to put over here as my fillers, cover up the dirt that is on my, um, my spiller here. And then I've got my naturals as well. So, you know, and you were going to pick out three of those. So I'm going to just get an idea of what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to set them down kind of around the pumpkin. So kind of remember what I did. And then I'm going to start gluing. Now you can always with, if you're, if you're not using rooted spillers, it's much easier because you can, you can take an, and you can tuck a spiller in after you get your succulents on there. You just kind of lift the leaves of something you, you've glued. You can pull it up just a little bit, stick it under there, and then stick it back in. Um, and all you're going to do is add some glue. The glue is water soluble. It is not going to hurt your succulents at all. And so you're going to glue these down. You notice I'm, I'm actually picking the stems in this case to glue. Maybe a little bit of the of the roots here. All right. Sometimes I'll put the glue here. Sometimes I'm going to put the glue here, and I'm going to focus my glue on the area of leaves, and I'm going to leave that stem where the roots are going to come out. And that's only if, if you were, if you want to try and salvage your, your succulents later and use them in your garden, that would be the way to do it because that's going to come in contact with the moss, which you're going to spritz and keep moist. And you're going to get roots in two or three months, maybe a month, depending on the, the type of succulent. Um, so you're just going to position the guy. And the nice thing, and this is why this is nice about the tacky glue is because, and I've already got glue on my fingers, um, is that this will pretty much stay stuck. Even though it's, it's, this is a pretty heavy succulent and I can feel that it wants to topple over. So I'm gonna keep kind of pushing it down. And that's the one thing that you're gonna do as you put them on is you're gonna find that they're gonna, some of them are gonna, gravity's gonna hit them and they're gonna try to tumble, right? So you're just gonna keep pressing a little bit until the glue gets set enough to keep them on there. Um, 
And then you're just gonna pick and choose. You know, this one I kind of would like it to stand up. And this is a a jade that's been in the sun. And um, nice thing about this particular type of jade is it in that when it gets a lot of sun, it turns very red around the edges. So it makes just a, a marvelous spot of color. And I'm just gonna tuck it in. And for those of you at home, you can see that I'm just, I'm just gonna tuck it in next to this one, okay? Because this one I want to stand up, right? I want it to stand up and it's, it's not going to stand up on its own unless I keep holding it and wait for the glue to dry, but I can grab one of my other fillers. Watch, it's already falling down. And grab one of my other fillers and spread some glue on it. And I can tuck it next to it. See how I did that. So I've tucked it next to it to make it stand up. And the other thing nice about the white glue is it dries clear. <laughs> so if you, you're a little messy with it, it's not gonna hurt anything. Um, so I'm just gonna keep going around. Throw some glue on it. And sometimes you move it a lot, you may need to maybe just add a little glue down there. Okay. Let's see, what else have I got? Um, this is also a type of jade, it's called Gollum jade. And the only way I remember that is because I think about, it looks like Shrek's ears mm -hmm. and somehow Gollum, you know, is a monster. Mm -hmm. Shrek is a monster. So I can remember that this is called Gollum jade. I'm not that good with rem remembering uh, plant names, but this one I can remember. So this is one I've already, I think I've already got enough color in here, but I do kind of want this one in here too. So mine's gonna have a lot of red uh, with the green, um, just cause I'm really, really into this. Um, I'm gonna put this guy over here. So I position it first, you saw how I did that. And then I know which side to put the glue on for this one, cause this one's gonna lay down. You can see I'm very generous on the glue. It's almost drippy, right? Now, some folks don't think you need to be that generous. You got you decide. And like I said, um, this one, um, you know, was was made, and it's already the spiller is already falling off, uh, and a couple of these are loose. So, um, if you want it to stay stuck, a healthy amount of glue is not a bad thing. And we gave you a full bottle, so. Um, now this one, you're gonna find some of these are gonna have like really long stems. Um, so you're gonna to have to, um, it, sometimes they come in handy because you can kind of tuck them in, you can put the glue and you can tuck them in and they'll stay put easier. Um, but in this case, this one's just a little too long. And depending on how you want it to lay, you know, if I wanted it to lay, well, you know, I want to lay this, lay out flatter this way, this stem is gonna get in the way. So you just make a decision about what you want to do with the stem. Um, ideally with succulents, um, you want to let the stem harden for 24 hours if you want this to root. Um, but we're not working with dirt, we're working with moss. So there's not a lot of, back in, in dirt there's bacteria. So you would have to worry about some succulents the the bacteria will suck up into that wet spot and you'll end up with it um, uh, rotting. And then your, your succulent will eventually die because it you know really won't root properly. Um, but anyway, so that's what I think I'm going to do with that one. And uh, you know sometimes if this one has a bad leaf. I'm just going to cut that off. You can use scissors. You can tear it. I'd have to have those sitting there. So um, and then this last one, of course, I have this hole here. So I'm looking at this one, trying to figure out. You know, it's it's one of the reasons I picked it because it's it's not round. It's got pokey ones, right? And that, that works great when what you're trying to do is maybe cover up what which so you can't see it, right? So that's the idea with that one is I'm gonna actually put that in there. Um
I did that, I stood my glue up and now I'm having to do this, right? Yep, see this guy, gravity's, gravity's getting him already. All right, so I've got my, my spillers, I've got my thriller, I've got some filler. I've still got, oops, I just lost some greenery there. Um, I've still got a little bit of space here so I can grab some of the, the extra, you know, the really small stuff and I'm gonna put those in there. Um, and then I'm gonna look at, um, I'm gonna look at the naturals that I have or, you know, this one I've got lots of color because I've used the, the red um, jade plants. Again, just trying to make sure gravity is not taking its course here. And, um, you know, this, this stuff can add, you know, if you need color, I don't think this one needs color. I think it's got, you know, with, with all the red on it, um, I think it's, it's got enough, but, um, you know, you can get, we don't actually have any of these, but one of the volunteers for the ones that we have in the, um, the greenhouse, she got these at Michael's. They're just, uh, they come in a, like a spray. So they kind of go in a, in a, you know, add color to a vase, let's say, of, of straw flowers or something. Um, and we just cut them, cut them up and stuck them in as, as a, um, you can see here. Where am I? Um, oh, thanks, Kevin. Um, like I said, this one's not the best look because things are falling off of it, but at least it gives you the idea of, of the, you know, how we use those little orange balls as color because, you know, the, the um, and, and this one, the, um, I think, that, I think that one was supposed to have um, uh, these guys, right? Um, but they kind of fell off. So um, if you use a natural like this, um, it might be a good idea. This one's pretty pretty stiff. It might be a good idea to add a little bit of glue around the edge of this just to make sure these don't fall off because they do come apart eventually. Um, and that might be true you know, of anything that, that's like a seed pod. Eventually, because we've cut this off the plant, the seed pods, uh, you know, may fall off of it. So if you want it to stay intact, a little bit of extra glue around the seed pod area and the stem can help. Um, so where was I? Um, I lost track. I lost my train of thought, guys. Um, okay, we're going to continue gluing the rest of these yeah. fillers. Oh, we were talking about um, adding the naturals because I'm at that point. Thank you, Kevin. and sort of trying to decide, you know, which ones I want and where I might want them. The nice thing about this is I can, I can put that in later. So I kind of like that there. So I'm just gonna position it and then add enough glue so I know it's gonna stick. And for those of you at home, you can see that what I've done is I just add a little green patch here and I'm just gonna tuck this guy with glue on it into there. And there I have a just a natural just kind of pops out there. I think it looks um it looks very natural. Oh I can't believe I said that. Oh my God. Um all right. So um you know and these these you see laying around um uh, on the sidewalk through the park. Um they're really easy to grab pick up. So if you want to make you know pumpkins in the future, all of a sudden you find yourself looking at the ground because you've got all these natural these things that are laying around that really you know can add um personally i hate these little things laying around because you do not want to step on these they're horrible um but adding it to uh you know something like this really got a little bit of a pop to it so i kind of like that one i might add one of those um particularly over here and this is an example of where i'm gonna have to lift maybe and put that there. Because I'm not sure how good, actually it's gonna stay pretty good because those little spikes are in my grass, right? 
So um, I can just add a little bit of glue back there to the stem that I tucked in. And that one's gonna stay. All right, now, I think that we have finished it. I'm not real happy about where this one's laying. So I may need to pick this up and tuck it in more, or because this one, I've got, these are on the roots and so is this one, but I don't like how that one's laying. So I'm going to actually cut this off of the roots and choose to do it differently. I want it to lay that way. So I'm gonna have to do this down. And it's a, you know, it's a well-established one, although these guys, um, if you don't keep these, uh, the ones with the little jelly beans moist, the jelly beans tend to fall off the stem very easily. So these, this is one of those succulents that definitely tells you um, if you don't water it well enough. All right, let's hope that that one will stay there. All right. And now I'm just gonna keep an eye on it, look at it for what gravity's done to it. That one's knocked over. I need to move that succulent a little bit more this way so that it will keep that guy standing up. All right. And then sometimes you'll have kind of a spot where you can see stems, you can see glue. I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to look at my naturals and consider putting something in there. So I'll show, let's see if I can show from the camera how you kind of see in here, I've got stems and, you know, it's just, it, it's a kind of a pet peeve thing, right? It doesn't really affect anything, but for me, it's like, I don't want to see the, the bottom of the stem of this. So I'm going to add a natural in there as well. Um, I think this one's interesting because it's, uh, it's got wire on it. I think this was uh, originally maybe used for our um, wreath workshop. I don't know if you guys know, but in, in the, at the during the holidays, I think in December, we are uh, we do the, the the wreaths where we build them um, from cuttings in the park. Uh, and uh, this has actually been wired so that it could be uh, wired onto the wreath. So it's a it's a leftover, if you will, from that. But I'm going to use it in this spot, I'm just getting the wire out of the way. And I'm gonna tuck this guy down in here. And it completely hides, completely hides that stem. You don't see it at all now, you just see the natural. So um, this one's still falling apart. So, okay, so now my, my chore for the moment is just to try and make sure that these things are going to stay where I put them. And um, this one just keeps wanting to fall over. So it may be that I need to take a natural or something. I may move that one and place a natural next to it so that it'll stay standing um, because it's continuing to fall over. You know, I've kind of propped it up against this one. So, all right. So, um, I know we said that this was gonna take an hour, um, but I'm basically done. So if anybody at home that was following along has finished theirs as well, um, feel free to snap a picture of it. And if you can send it to us on the Zoom, we're gonna um, show that off. And, um, oh, no, I was gonna take questions while I was going, so please. My stem is kind of nice, kind of long in the burrow the inch of it. Okay. Would that look nice to keep that? Well, you could you repeat the question, please. Okay. The question was um, she has a succulent with 
No, I have the pumpkin stem. Oh, the pumpkin stem. I like it. It's kind of turned. And it's if great. you like your pumpkin stem, it's part of your naturals, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I do have um, one pumpkin that I'm considering working on that's at home that has the same thing. It has a long curly stem and I haven't cut it off. The only reason I cut this one off um, is because like I said, because it was, it was kind of cool looking when I first looked at it, you know, it's got kind of that, that, that dark, you know, I mean, you guys can see it. Um, so it's, it was kind of craggy looking and cool and I thought I might use it, but the reason I cut it off is because it was mushy. And I thought that's not going to get any better unless I tried to maybe, you know, use a blow dryer or something on it to get it dry. But I was just afraid that it was, you know, it was kind of moldy looking. Okay. I was just afraid it was going to cause my pumpkin to mold okay. before, you know, and because the, the stem's inside there and you're going to, um, uh, the care for this, and I don't want to do it right now because I'm still um, I'm still waiting for this glue to dry. But once your glue is dry, um, the care for this to keep these these succulents moist and beautiful is you're going to get yourself a spray bottle, and you're just gonna you can just spray the tops of your succulents. But for some of these smaller ones, that might not be sufficient because they really do need water to get them to, uh, or at least moisture to get them to root. So for the smaller ones you may want to actually dampen the, the greenery around them um, and actually get in there and spray in the, in the you know, in the, the crocks and cr cracks and crevices um, to get it so that um, you've got enough moisture there. You want your, your moss to be moist. You do not want a puddle, particularly for those of you that have pumpkins that are, that are dipping in. If you get too much water in there, you're basically going to have a puddle where your moss is, and it's going to just continue to get your pumpkin wet. And you, so you, you, that's when your pumpkin may not last as long because it, it could cause rot. Uh, but if you keep just enough moisture on there to keep the succulents nice, um, you'll, you'll be fine. And it will last a long time. Did okay. that answer your question? Yes, it did. Okay, perfect. So how long do the succulents last on the, uh, on the moss? Like um, as long as you keep them moist, a long time. The problem is they're going to get bigger. So, you know, everything grows, right? And succulents right. grow too. So some of these are very slow. The jades are pretty slow growing. So I'm not too worried about the, about the jade. This particular big one, what it'll tend to do is um, it's going to have babies because it's, it's basically sitting there and it's done. It realizes, oh, I'm, I might be, I might be getting ready to die. So down here on the end, it's gonna produce some, some roots, but it's also gonna start producing babies down here around the edges. So it's gonna kind of push itself up and, and go different directions depending on the, on the babies. And you can see that as an example on maybe a few of the, um, uh, I don't have any, and I don't have an example here, but a couple of the, um, uh, the ones back there, I'll have two or three on them and because they've got, you know, they've got babies that have produced from the bottom. Um, and I see Sue holding this guy, this guy, and these are things that, um, you know, you can, you can think about purchasing at, uh, are we, we, have, yeah. we have a few of these. Yeah. So if you, if you like these, um, keep in mind though, if you actually, you know, you may want to cut the stick off, you can stick the stick into your pumpkin, but again, you're breaking the, um, the, the pumpkin that way. So if you're not worried about it rotting and, and you only want it to last maybe through, through Halloween. Or through Thanksgiving, these are great um, table decorations. So, um, and you know, this this is a pretty good sized thing to put in the center of your table. Um, and it, I think it, you know, people just think it's gorgeous. And then you've got these little guys that you can make, and you can put those kind of different places on the table. So you can actually decorate your table with this. Um, and the nice thing about these is they're lower. So once you get people in the chairs, it's not like having flowers or anything big in the middle. You can actually see and talk over these, so um, I think that's good. So, uh, so yeah, so it's just kind of stuff back there. So, how would you attach that? Um, without 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 it, I might that? actually um, I might just take the stick off. I might break the stick, and um, 
Can I do that? You may. Okay, good. I'm going to break this stick. They were donating. Because I kind of... I mean, it's really cute. Here, here. Um, but, you know, if I if I actually made room for him, I mean, he could be a little scarecrow. I could just uh, glue him in the top of my pumpkin. I mean, he doesn't quite fit there, but yeah, I mean, I would just add some glue to his bottom. Let's see if we can see him on the camera. Well, actually, this camera probably works just as well, doesn't it? Nope, we're over here. <laughs> Where are we, Kevin? Okay, move over here. There we are. Oh, we're over here. Okay, good. That's the one I can show. So, you know, all I've done is added, I've added kind of a scarecrow uh, to the top of my pumpkin. Um, and, you know, if you're going to keep it outside, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it gives the birds off of it. Um, <laughs> I prefer to keep them. Oh, question. The question is, do we want to keep them outside or inside? And um, you can keep them outside. Um, I like mine inside. Um, a lot of succulents uh, do better in indirect light, believe it or not. Some of them do great, like the jade is great in the sun. Um, these uh, little um, jelly beans are fine in the sun, but they will uh, the tips of them will turn red as well. And if you put them in the sun, they need more water. So if you're going to have it outside, you may need to buy more water. You also, uh, you know, may find that the squirrels, uh, if you have them in your yard, can make quite a mess of things. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I would I, I, I would keep them inside. You can keep them inside and, and spritz them. The other thing with keep putting them outside is unless you spend a lot of time outside, you may forget to spritz them. And you should at least spritz them once a week. Um, they're it, 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 particularly outside. You're going to get wind. You're going to get sun, um, and that's going to tend to um, to weather them. And uh, you know, so inside, they're um, they're a little safer. But you know, if you've got animals, that could be that could be an issue as well. Um, I actually haven't uh, researched to see if succulents are uh, uh, dog and cat safe. But you know, if you've got cats, cats into into, into everything. Um, I have little dogs, so as long as they get up high, it's not a problem. Um, and when we get rain, it may. Yeah, and rain is definitely not going to be good if you've used the um, the white glue and it, and it gets too wet, it, it's going to fall apart. So that's just a thought. You may want to bring it in in the rain. Um, but yeah, this is, I mean, well, and the other thing is, you know, if you put this on your doorstep, hopefully it won't disappear. You won't be in the neighborhood where your Amazon pack packages disappear because this might disappear as well. Um, but, um, but yeah, so you can, you can do either. It's just, you have to think about where you're putting it and, and the care of it. Um, so other questions. So I'm unclear about, um, do we prune the end of the second or not prune it so that it. You can go ahead and prune it. Cause so that, that was the thing is, is what, what? Yeah. yo, she wants to know about pruning the end of a succulent. Because um, a lot of these succulents have been, um, you know, the, the ones that you picked up have been trimmed. Um, they're, the, the end is dry. So if you were going to put this in dirt, it's ready to go in dirt. Because a lot of succulents, and this is what I was saying, the succulents, um, some of them uh, absorb moisture and bacteria from the dirt. And then what happens is they, the, the, the stems rot. So even if you've got roots, um, you know, maybe down here, some of these, uh, like this one might even have little bitty roots here. Um, and some little bitty, bitty roots there. Um, even if it's got roots, if, if it starts to rot, you won't know it because it's in the ground and it's rotting. And every, you know, and if you give it too much water, it's also gonna rot. Um, so th that's the caution that you have with cutting your stems is because of the dirt and the bacteria in the dirt. What I was saying for your pumpkins is you're putting them on moss. The moss is coming out of a bag. There could be some bacteria, um, but in the years, few years that I've been doing these, I haven't noticed the problem. Um, the succulents do root. Um, I've had, um, I had one of these in my kitchen window for four months and it, you know, it's finally the pumpkin started to rot. I mean, it just kind of gets mushy, starts to get a little mushy. And sitting there on my windowsill, you know, and every time I was washing dishes or, you know, in, at the sink, I could I could see it and I just thought it was so pretty. Um, but eventually, it, you know, after three or four months, it started to get squishy. 
Um, and when I took it apart, everything had roots. So I had um, the ability to, to plant those, um, you know, and just getting little pots and putting them in some dirt worked great. Um, did that answer your question? Yes. Okay. So, so yeah, so feel free, you know, if, if the stem works for you, like in this particular case, you know, this one, it's pretty, pretty nice. The stem's going to lay flat. It's going to be really easy to work with, but sometimes the stem's coming straight out and you may want to, you know, it, it's nice because you can, you can cut it and you can stick it down into the moss a little bit um, and it'll, you know, <laughs> keep gravity from letting it fall off the pumpkin, which reminds me, I should take a look at this again, make sure everything's staying put and it does appear to be staying put. So that's good. Um, other questions? All right, so we're gonna be here as you're wandering around. Um, Sue's got a little bit more to announce and um, and then we can get started. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. Welcome. For showing us how easy it is to do a beautiful piece. As far as how long they can last, I gave one to my brother and sister-in-law who are not gardeners, who do not do anything a year. And then we gave it to somebody else. <laughs> I suspect now it's gone. It's been another year, but they will last for a long time. So anyway, thanks again, Kathy, for showing yeah. us how, I guess, easy. You made it look easy. But it is. yeah, so I'll be interested to see everybody's creations here. So in a few days, all participants will be emailed a link to a recording of the presentation and an evaluation form. Any unanswered questions can be addressed at that time. We appreciate feedback on what worked and where we can improve. Please join us for future seminars and workshops. On November 5th, our free seminar will be Rose Propagation from Cuttings with Master Rosarian Stu Dalton. Um, right now, uh, the in-person is fully, fully booked on that. It's gonna be really popular. So Zoom is available and there may be some openings people do cancel. So let me know if you sign up on Zoom and you're interested in coming in person and then I will let you know if there's any openings. The Arboretum Society has a variety of volunteer opportunities from the greenhouse, nursery, education, help with Zoom setups and more. Let us know if you're interested by completing the evaluation form or you can email us at info at sanmateoarboretum.org or you can leave a message by calling 650-579-0536. And again, a huge thank you to Kathy for today's creative workshop and to Kevin, our president, for handle, handling the technical part of the program. Thank you for joining us today. The program is now finished.